Amen. 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 It is opportunistic that we are here today and we have made a decision to return back Amen. on this evening to yes, continue yeah. our effort to worship God in spirit Amen. and in truth. Amen. On this morning, we talk to you from the topic, uh, discipleship, living for Christ. Yes. On this evening, we are going to somewhat shift gears and we're going to go to the Old Testament, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 2, and talk to you from the topic, Pleasures of Men. Well, pleasures okay. of Men. So we look at the world today and we see man's perspective as to how things ought to be here on this world. We look at the moral standard and it's fleeting and decreasing day by day. Obviously with the understanding that man is large and in charge. And essentially a man can do what he pleases in our society today. A man can choose pleasure in many different ways in our time in society Amen. today. Amen. And this idea of seeking pleasure or seeking desire uh, for man to accomplish and be who he wants is no different today as it was in the time of Solomon. And when we look at Ecclesiastes, we can see great wisdom and understanding uh, in seeing Solomon's perspective and view on the idea of the vanity of pleasure. If you have your Bibles, I would ask that you take them out and turn them to Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 2, and we will begin reading in verse number 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, beginning in verse number 1. The word of God said, I said in my heart, come now, I will test you with myrrh, Therefore, enjoy pleasure. But surely this also was vanity. I said of laughter, madness, and of mirth. What does it accomplish? I searched in my heart how to gratify my flesh with wine, while guiding my heart with wisdom, and how to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was good for the sons of men to do under heaven all the days of their lives. I made my works great. I built myself houses and planted myself vineyards. I made myself gardens and orchards and I planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made myself water pools from which to water the growing trees of the grove. I acquired male and female servants and had servants born in my house. Yes, I had greater possessions of herds and flocks than all who were in Jerusalem before me. I also gathered for myself silver and gold and special treasures of kings and of provinces. I acquired male and female singers, the delights of the sons of men, and musical 
instruments of all kinds. So I became great and excelled more than all who were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me. Whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I did not withhold my heart from any pleasure. For my heart rejoiced in all my labor, and this was my reward from all my labor. And then I looked on all the works that my hands had done, and on all the labor in which I had toiled, and indeed all was vanity, grasping for the wind. There was no profit under the sun. So we consider a moment, the topic, the pleasures of men, the pleasures of men. Here, we have a man that had everything. As we talked some time ago today, living your life to the fullest. Amen. Solomon lived his life to the fullest. Amen. He took it wherever his eyes and his desires wanted to go. And he tried everything under the sun. Let us understand what vanity is. Vanity simply means vapor or breath. Such as the rapidly vanishing vapor of one's breath in the cold, crisp air. If you have lived anywhere beyond the Mason-Dixie line, you may have experienced seeing your breath blown out in a cold winter's day, and it comes out as a gas and a mist, and you can see it. And as just as soon as you can see it, it disappears. Amen. It dissipates into nothing. Just as the pleasures of man disappear and dissipate into nothing, the houses you build, the wealth and possessions that you take hold of, the jobs in which you excel and become a great conqueror of. They're here today, but lo, they're gone tomorrow. Amen. And so as we look at the text, there are some things I want you to take note of in Solomon's message. He uses, beginning in verse 4 uh, through uh, verse number 10, the pronoun I and my. I and my. I and my. So many times when we look at the world from the I perspective, we leave out everybody else because it's our view that it's about me, my, and I. And when we have that contextual understanding of the world, we forget about just how good God is. Amen. The things that you have, you did not get by accident. You're supposed to be stewards of everything God has given you. Amen. You are to be someone that values the things that God has given you, not just to value them and hold them as possessions and look at them and say, oh my God, how good and excellent am I? But rather, we ought to be saying, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you mighty God. 
it was not me that did this, but it was you by your grace and mercy that I have what I have and I give it all back to you if I had to do it all over again. But the challenge with our world today is this same I and my philosophy is the same I and my philosophy that we have in the world today. Amen. It's about I and what I want. Yeah. It's about me and what I want. Yeah. It ain't about you and I don't care what you want. I'm going to get what I want and I don't care yeah. about you. Yeah. We see it even from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. I ain't going to call nobody's name, but it's all about him. Amen. He could care less about the effects of the things and the policies that he puts in the place that cause people hurt and harm. Amen. But until we as Christians get off the I and my and myself train. We are doomed for everything that we have to turn into vanity. Amen. A vapor that is here today and disappears. The great wisdom of Solomon is that after experiencing everything that he was big enough to do, he came to the realization in Ecclesiastes chapter seven, 12, rather, that all that he had was vanity. Amen. Because in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, beginning in verse nine, he says, and moreover, because a preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yes, he pondered and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find acceptable words. What was written was upright, words of truth. The words of the wise are like golds, and the words of scholars are like well-driven nails given by one shepherd and further my son he admonished by these of making many books there is no end and much study is wearisome to the flesh and in verse 13 he says let us hear the conclusion now a conclusion is the end of the story he says a conclusion of the whole matter. Amen. What is important to the great preacher? What is the understanding that he has now come to? The conclusion of the matter as it relates to everything under the sun. All right. He says these words, fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Amen. For God will bring every work into judgment, Amen. including every secret thing, whether good or evil. Amen. At the end of the day, we have a God in which we have to answer to. Amen. And because we have a God in which we have to answer to, we need to be upright. And being upright means you need to obey God. Amen. Because your righteousness is as a filthy rag yeah. unto God. Amen. And how many of you have seen filthy rags? The dirty and nasty. Amen. And that is how your righteousness, your self-righteousness, appears before a righteous and almighty God. Amen. As a dirty Filthy rag. But see, you have an opportunity that those in the Old Testament did not have. Yeah. Salvation 
is free. Amen. Somebody had to pay for it, but you didn't. Amen. The one who had to pay for it was a son of God, Jesus Amen. Christ who in obedience unto his father took on Calvary's cross, was hung on the cross between two thieves, nails driven through his hands and his feet. He hung on that old rugged cross and gave up his life for us that we might be justified in faith. Amen. And being justified by faith simply means that we have been acquitted from the sin that we have committed. They're acquitted from the judgment of death and degradation that was due us because we are sinful men. And therefore, those who have obeyed the gospel have now been found righteous in the sight of God, both adopted into the family of God as sons and daughters. And therefore, we have a new understanding and a new reverence for just who God is. Amen. By his grace and his mercy, we have salvation. You don't have to live out there with the mind that Solomon once had and that he was willing to try everything. You don't have to try everything. You just need to give up and give it to God. Give it to God. If you're here today, and you need salvation. Amen. The opportunity is yours. If you need to repent of your sins, you're a member of the church, you need to repent of your sins. The opportunity is yours. What is it that you have to do if you are not a member of the church of Christ and you want to obey the gospel? You first need to hear the word of God. You Amen. need to believe what is said. You need to repent of your sins. You need to confess that Jesus Christ is a son of God. And upon your confession, we will then baptize you in the watery grave of baptism. You'll go down a sinner, but you'll come up a saint. The opportunity is yours as we stand and sing the invitation song.